totally going to wing it all anyway. So. <laughs> okay, perfect. Uh, hello, this is uh, Kevin's Miniatures and Hobby Table, episode six. We're here with uh, Garnet Germain, whose name, I, for some reason, I just continually butcher. I don't know why I do that. That was good. You're a beauty. I, but I got it right this time. You did nail it. Uh, <laughs> I've known Garnet for a couple of years now. Uh, like me, uh, a rec as a recreational player a few years ago, uh, Garnet was uh, going to uh, all the tournaments. Uh, and then, was it about a year ago that you just, or maybe two years ago, that you just kind of made a made a switch in the way you were thinking? Well, there was there was a group of us that wanted to, uh, we, we had picked up the game and really, really liked how tight the rule set was. And then we decided that uh, we wanted to try and elevate our level to, to play well against the guys who came up from Red Deer. Yeah, they, yeah, they yeah. They would come up and just that... spank us. And it was just brutal. <laughs> yes. So we Because they played a lot. And they play a lot. Yeah. And, and they were, and they, they were killing us at every tournament. Yeah. They were already veteran players, so we we sat down and, and uh, developed a small group of, of guys who wanted to play uh, really competitively and, and So who's in that? I know there's Mike Richardson, I know Josh is in there. Yeah, you uh, Steve and I Steve Jesso. Steve, Josh, uh, Mike and I founded the group. It's yeah. called Murders Row. Yeah. Uh, there's about eleven or twelve members now uh, of guys who just really wanna they want to place at tournaments. They want to go to the steamrollers. They want to go to the lock and loads, the yeah. Gen Cons, the not Gen Cons, but uh, War Machine weekends. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Uh, Temple Cons. Hey, like there's the War Machine at Gen Con. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> cool too. Yeah. Are you going this year? No. Oh, you're not going. No, this year. I okay. only have so much con time a lot <laughs> yeah, of yeah, yeah. lock and load eight, some of that. Yeah. Uh, and then we, we, we built a little group to to talk about lists and talk about uh, good strategies that have worked for all of us and. Uh, we've made a concerted effort to, to play lots of 50 point games with yeah. steamroller scenario gotta play with the death clock get used to it so it's almost like muscle memory yeah 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 and uh, what what factions have you played in the past or is it always Crix uh, so I, I picked up the Crix battle box and the one thing I really liked about the faction was with arc nodes that are speed 7 yeah. I have a long 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 reach yeah. I, can, I can affect just about anywhere on the game on the game board any time that I really really feel like I want to and I've been playing them for, for almost two years now, and I picked up Legion as kind of like a palate cleanser. Yeah. Because a lot of guys would go from army to army to army to army, and, and I really, really, really believe in picking a faction and mastering it. Right. And right. I've managed to... Which is unlike the rest of us. Yeah. Which just <laughs> collect factions and play whatever. Costs money, bro. I know. <laughs> and takes a lot of time to paint. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I played Legion for uh, about a month, month and a half, and it scratched the itch. Yeah. Uh, but since then, I've been back to to Crix and I haven't I, I haven't even deviated a little bit. So, how long have you actually been playing War Machine? I think uh, just a little under two years, I think. Okay, all right, fair enough. Yeah, we okay. we came in. Uh, my timeline's probably a little fuzzy, but I think we came in shortly after Wrath was released. Okay, all right, fair enough. I think that might have been two years. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, because that's when I started seeing you up at um, up at Roy's up yeah. in Saint Albert. You were yeah. playing Morton Ebra. I was, yeah. Right. I had uh, I had been playing uh, uh, Minoth for several years. I picked up a, a Kador army, and um, I picked up a few mercenaries, and um, I set aside uh, Minoth, which I had been playing for several years, and then I and then I started up with Crix. Pal cleanser. It, it, I guess, except I just really enjoyed playing them. I mean, I love Crix because it's it's very different than playing Minoth. Minoth is just getting super tough jacks and and attritioning the heck. Out of out of your opponent often, yep. uh, but uh, Crix is more like surgically going in and uh, and assassinating scalpel, Scal yeah, scalping out the uh, the enemy caster. And, uh, and it's funny when I went over to Crix, uh, I was like, okay, everyone was playing, was it Epic Gatsby? I think they were playing Epic Gatsby oh. and probably some some Scar, and uh, oh, and a lot of Epic Denigra at that time. Uh, there was a fair bit of that being played, and I went in and uh, I was an idiot. I said, "I got to play different. I got to play different casters." So I was playing more than ever. And it's funny. Uh, Epic Gatsby was one of the casters. I, I own him, yeah. and I I fiddled with the list that everybody knows is the Gatsby list that everybody plays. Yeah. Uh, I played it maybe like five or six times, and I I've never really gotten into it. Right. I yeah. play. I usually play the non-standard uh, lists for Cricks that. Not a lot of people really give a lot of credit for, but they can do some very, 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 very different things. Player, what are some of the best practices that you've put in place in order to uh, in order to improve your game? Uh, there are two key items that we came across when we sat down, and uh, the first one that is the most important 
uh, lesson that I would teach any uh, War Machine player who wants to, to play better and play yeah. place in, in events. Uh, games are won and lost s almost exclusively on mistakes. Yeah. Uh, there's an element uh, that, w that we call mistake management. If you, if you can get into the game and you stay mentally engaged the whole game, I know uh, con days are long when you're playing like five or six games in a day. Oh, it's six games is brutal. Uh, yeah. Stay hydrated, eat yeah. food. Yeah. Protein bars and like candy doesn't do it. Yeah. Uh, so and, and go into the game thinking that you have you have a good chance. Any list can beat any list. Yeah. If if one of the players makes a mistake, like forgets to put banishing ward on something, yeah. you, you can have the game right there. Sure. And uh, some some players will get up to a table and see a list that looks like a hard counter. Like oh, I'm playing against this guy's anti crooks list. But if he forgets to put his upkeeps out or forgets to allocate focus and gets excited and just starts moving his models, well. You, you still have a good you're, you're, you're up. You're up yes. at that point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah exactly. So, so you're, you're saying, uh, rule number one, mistake management. And the way that you're handling that is uh, staying involved in the game, staying hydrated, uh, keep your food intake. But really, I think one of the things that you've got to be talking about is you've got to know what your stuff does because you can take advantage of your opponent's mistakes. You don't want your opponent to take advantage of your mistakes. That's right. Yeah. So one of the, one of the, that goes into the second thing is knowing how the synergies in your own army work. Uh, and, and what can trigger those synergies from working. So in the machine minds list, the example that I gave to you earlier is, I, if I go first, I know what my, my range is on a kill box scenario to get my opponent, to, yeah. to really stick it to him. Okay, so talk about that range, what is it? So if I, for example, if I deploy seven, I know that if I put an arc node uh, around where my opponent's gonna put his caster, yeah. seven inches, yeah. there's a 48 inch board, right? Yep. So I'm gonna put that seven, my opponent's probably gonna put his caster at nine or 10. Yeah. So I know that if I put uh, Infernal Machine, which is plus two speed, not movement, yeah. on an arc node, and then use a War Witch to, to give it a boost. I can run that guy 18. So now I am on the 25 inch, well, so one inch on theirs. So there's 23 inches left of their board edge, and they're up 10. So I'm 13 inches away from their caster. Mm -hmm. If they come up three or four inches out of their deployment zone, I or out of where they deployed, I know that they are still in the kill box. Yeah. And on my turn, I if I can move just a couple of inches, I can get him with a shadow bind. So essentially, you shadow you have the potential of shadow binding him in the kill box, and you're going to start scoring on the top of two. Yeah, on the top of two. Uh, so. Any other kind of ideas or tricks that you, that you've uh, developed uh, kind of over the last couple of years that you've been playing the game that you think kind of raises your game? Uh, plan your plan your turn on your opponent's turn. Mm -hmm. Be deliberate but quick with your movements. Yeah. Uh, when you're when you're activating your stuff, I'm I'm planning what I'm going to do on my turn as you're moving your models. Uh, like I had a game plan on my turn for for what I wanted to do, and then when you're going, I'm I'm looking very clearly at where I want my ideal matchups and seeing if I can make those. So that that way, by the time the clock's already back to me, I've already made those decisions. Yeah. So I'm not staring at the board for for five minutes. I'll I'll look at it for 15, 20 seconds to to decide whether or not I want to take the chance and sure. do the odds. Yeah. Uh, but the decision's already been made at that point. Sure. Okay, so Garnet is going to bring out a, uh, is it tier four? It is tier, uh, tier four. Tier four uh, machine mines list. Uh, it's fully painted, which is awesome. Only fully painted list. Okay, great. Uh, we're going to take, uh, we're going to take some pictures of that so you can see it. And um, I'm an idiot tonight. I am uh, getting away from Minoth. I'm going to play some mercenaries tonight. I'm going to play a list that I've never played before, and I'm going to play units I've never played before. So this, really what I'm doing is I'm setting you up for an epic, epic victory. You know those tonight. underhanded pitches? They are generous. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to throw uh, Garnet a real softball tonight, and uh, we'll see what he does with it. Uh, anyway, we're going to get over to the gaming table and see how it goes. Okay, here we are. Uh, we're doing a close quarters scenario. Uh, we have two flag objectives here. Uh, you want to dominate a friendly flag for a point, dominate an enemy flag for two points, or control it for one point. Uh, this is our table layout. We have a uh, stream running through the center of the board, which is water, and we're also treating the, uh, the whole width of it as rough terrain. Uh, we have these kind of rocky outcroppings. The entire base is going to be an obstruction. Uh, we have a couple of forests. Uh, we have uh, a piece of uh, uh, good old uh, GW terrain here, uh, which is going to act as uh, some cover. And um, we've rolled, and uh, Garnet has uh, first player. Uh, so um, I'm uh, deployed uh, forward a little bit, 
and, uh, and Garnet is deployed uh, back at seven inches. Why don't you talk about uh, your force and kind of what you, expect it to, what you expect it to do? So I have a couple of heavies which can threaten a number of uh, Kevin's items on his board and I have a decisive advantage on this particular table uh, because, the, because of the, the river in the middle of the table. And I know he doesn't have a ton of Pathfinders. I, I mean, he's got some, but I can put Ghost Walk on any model on the table on my side, possibly two or three of them if I want to make an investment. Uh, so the terrain will help protect and deliver my army in addition to my feet, so I expect that my Bile Thralls will be able to, uh, to get a lot of work done. Uh, yes, and, I, and I have the perfect target for Bile Thralls all through my army here. Yeah, so I'm, I'm a little concerned about the Gun Mages because they have, a pretty long, uh, they have a pretty long threat range and they ignore stealth, which is a key uh, defensive aspect of my army. Uh, so hopefully maybe I'll be able to get them in uh, mixing it up with some machine rates. Okay. Uh, from my perspective, as I had uh, said, uh, I don't really know this army very well. I'm playing several units I have not played before, but uh, essentially what I have is I have a Damiano as the caster. Uh, he works well with the uh, steelheads, so I have some halberdiers and I have some, uh, some cavalry along with Stannis. Um, I've got some uh, Horgenhold uh, Forge Guard, the Hammer Dwarves. Uh, Damiano has his uh, Rocinante Character Jack with him in order to give him Guard Dog, and he'll also cast Surefoot on it uh, in order to get up to Defense 19. I've got Gorman to provide some defense uh, to Damiano. Uh, as uh, Garnet mentioned, I've got, um, I've got the Gun Mages uh, in play. Uh, they're going to benefit from Damiano's uh, Deadeye. And uh, a couple of other solos is uh, we've got um, We've got Epic Eris uh, up here on Advanced Deploy, and uh, we've also got uh, Rupert. Uh, in the background here, we have uh, Prime Alexia. She has her Risen. Uh, she's going to be collecting souls, and uh, see what I can do with her. I've not played her before, so uh, that should be interesting. And, uh, and then we've got uh, Anastasia uh, ambushing. And you've got some ambushing uh, characters as well. You have three machine rates uh, coming in. So, they actually can't do much against a character jack, right? No, in matchups where, where my opponent is either hordes or has only character jacks, uh, I use them to harass uh, the flanks. Yeah, I'll sure. I'll usually put all three of them on one and then either just run them up to engage uh, right. shooty units or try and get some charges. Because they usually get back strikes too because they'll just put them in behind them. Yeah, great. Garnet, as I'm going across the units here, why don't you explain what you have uh, piece by piece. So starting with the slayers over here and your bone jack. So those two slayers uh, are four points each under the tier instead of the normal six. I've painted the arcs to match the Jack Marshall, Iron Lich Overseer, which is immediately behind them. Right. And I've also numbered the back of the arc as well to alleviate confusion that might arise during Yeah, Sure, sure, point. sure, yeah. Okay, I gotcha. All right, and here's your caster unit. Yeah, uh, each of them are individually named on the front of the base because uh, it's pretty important that damage is tracked very carefully on them. <laughs> sure. How easy you can and use uh, what you had mentioned before is that uh, is that any of them can activate uh, killbox, and we do have killbox in this scenario, so so you want to get them up. Yeah, I'll have to be a little careful. Uh, it's not really a good uh, scenario for me to possibly score in more than one, but that's uh, that's one that's also possible. Sure. Okay, and then we have the dreaded uh, biles. They're my homeboys. Yeah. Big fan of those guys. And it looks like you got a Scarlock in there as well. Yeah, he's ready to hand out Ghost Walk uh, at a, on, on a moment's notice. Okay, it looks like another um, Jack Marshalled uh, set of uh, Slayers. Yeah, yeah. I, there are a couple different ways you can build an army like this. One of them is uh, instead of one Slayer, you could also buy two Helldivers. Yeah. So that's that's kind of something that I had looked at as well. But I find the Slayers, uh, the Slayers can do a lot of work, and they stand up pretty well to, to just normal infantry. Yeah, sure. And it uh, looks like you got a couple of um, Warwick Sirens as well. Yeah, I like two Warwick Sirens, uh, just kind of on the flanks. They can bring in sprays and help funnel my opponent uh, a little more to the center. Okay, and uh, and here's what we've got over on uh, my side. Uh, we have a, uh, a group of uh, cavalry along with Stannis. Uh, we've got the uh, pikemen in the back there. We've got uh, Prime Alexia. Uh, then we've got uh, Rupert. We also have some Hammer Dwarves. We have Rocinante. Uh, we have uh, the caster, Damiano. Uh, flanked by uh, Gorman on one side. Then we have a set of, uh, well, I'm embarrassed about this, some unpainted gun mages. Wah, wah. Wah, wah. And uh, the captain, uh, who's, uh, who's making up for the fact that uh, his friends aren't painted by being painted himself. Uh, uh, off to the side, we've got uh, Anastasia, 
waiting to ambush. And then uh, in the woods up here, we've got uh, Epigaris. Okay, okay. Uh, Garnet, why don't you uh, talk about uh, what happened in your first turn? So in my first turn, there was a lot of uh, allocation and a lot of running. Uh, I brought up uh, my two slayers and my uh, Iron Lich Overseer on this side, put them here just directly up with run moves. I had run my Pathfinder Stalker Jack straight up through the forest up to here. Four Does he have three. stealth? He has stealth and Pathfinder. Okay, great. Uh, I had run the War Witch Siren around to right here. Yeah. And then I had put uh, Infernal Machine on one of my Arc Nodes, which is now run 18 inches into the forest here. And then another Arc Node has come over to this side. So I'm, I'm deployed in, in enforcing this side pretty heavily because I see only Gun Mages over there. Yeah. Uh, my Battle Thralls got Ghost Walk and Occultation, and they, they ran up into the, into the terrain in the center. Uh, my Witches put up Veil of Mist to prevent Line of Sight uh, from directly ahead of me, and then I have the benefit of this and these bases blocking Line of Sight. Uh, my Scarlock. Uh, gave Ghost Walk to my Bile Thralls so that they could run through there no problem, alleviating focus on my caster. And then on this side, I ran one Arc Node up just in case I want to Arc a spell here, and I brought the War Witch over from here to here just to, to be ready to give it the one free focus that it might need next turn. And then just a general run from the Jack Marshall for my Slayers uh, and my Iron Lich Overseer from here. Great. Okay, uh, so we're going to go to the uh, bottom of turn one. This is the Mercenary turn. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to try and uh, push hard on my left, or on uh, Garnet's right. I'm going to use the cavalry to try and uh, kind of bludgeon my way through this side and uh, uh, threaten, the, uh, threaten his caster. Uh, I'm going to need some pikemen, or some halberdiers uh, up there to give them their flanking bonus. Uh, here we go. Uh, we're going to get underway now. Uh, bottom of turn one. As soon as I can find my tape measure. Here we go. Uh, there's the bottom of turn one. Uh, what I did was I uh, put up uh, Rupert. Rupert gave Pathfinder to the uh, Arcane Gun Mages. That's okay. I'm okay. fine with that. Okay. Yeah, it's no problem. Uh, and I put a couple of Gun Mages up. I kept some back. Um, I'm not really that familiar with the threat ranges that are going to be coming here, so uh, got a couple up here. What I'd like to do with Garnet is kind of draw draw some offensive power uh, into the woods. Um, I've got a fair, fairly good counter strike here. Uh, Garnet has an assassination threat at, what did we say, probably about 12 and a half, about 12 and a half inches. Uh, I've got my caster back here, but he is protected by a ring of troops. I'm hoping that's enough. We'll see. We've got um, uh, Gorman out here with a cloud as well. Um, we've, got, uh, what have, we've got Death March on the Halberdiers right now. I uh, wasted a coin, uh, giving them an ability uh, to reform, which they're not going to use, or which they did not use. Um, I've got uh, the cavalry uh, pressuring on the left side. I do not have Pathfinder, but they have uh, kind of a lot of good, strong movement capability. Uh, so uh, they're getting ready. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to absorb uh, the loss of one or two of these guys and then use, them in a, use uh, the rest in a counterpunch. And uh, we've got a couple of halberdiers over there to help fuel uh, some flanking bonuses. Uh, Alexia is just hanging out in the middle, uh, hoping to uh, collect some souls. And uh, that's pretty much it for my uh, first turn. I'm going to get out of kill box, uh, hopefully, on my uh, next turn. Uh, that's assuming I don't get shadow bound back in here. But uh, he's gonna, I'm going to have to advance about three more inches to get out of uh, kill box. So uh, that's it for my first turn. So, uh, Garnet, why don't you talk about what your plans are for uh, your turn two? So for this turn, I have my ambushing machine wraiths. I have three of them, which will be these three fellows right here. What I, I see what's happening over here, and I'd like to bring one in and have it just kind of jam and fill this spot up so that if he comes through, he's going to take free strikes for probably one or two of his cavalry. It's not going to do a ton of damage, but maybe this the one guy over here will help gum and prevent a situation from developing here. I can see him coming far this side, so I'm going to bring the rest of my outfit this way. 
uh, and make him commit to trying to score here and then I'll be able to, to take a piece or two in exchange and use this terrain to then protect myself further. Uh, I see what's happening here with, with his jack. What I would really like to do and to try and uh, put a lot of pressure on Kevin at this point is I want to take one of my arc nodes, move it up to a position where it can target the jack and then I would like to try and shadow bound the jack where it is forcing a big big jam on his next turn uh, make, forcing him to make some decisions in, in moving his, his units around in a manner that he might not have planned for uh, and maybe forcing him to bring his, his caster central where it'll be exposed to bile thralls or on the far side where it won't bother me at all and it may even get kill boxed on this side. I'm going to bring a couple of the, uh, the wraiths over here and perhaps try to kill Iris and the, the gun mage UA which is so delightfully painted. So that's, ready for death yeah that's exactly how I know that's the one I want uh, I want to also put an infernal machine on my assassination piece because odds are good that I'm not going to be able to get it through Roxinante and I'm going to put it into his gun mages uh, to prompt a fear check and perhaps uh, gain some ground on this side while using the force to protect my, my jack uh, I'm pretty sure that I'm far out of range for all of my bile thralls uh, threats for this turn so I'll have to uh, protect them for, uh, for perhaps uh, something next turn. Okay, so fair enough. So let's, uh, let's get underway with your turn two. So what I tried to do for this turn was I wanted to bring my arc node up here, which I did from the forest. I upkept Infernal Machine on it, and I went for Shadow Binds on Rocinante, which I hit on the second one. There's a Shadow Bind there, so he won't be able to move. So I felt a little safer bringing my, jack, my jacks over this way, knowing that they weren't going to get charged uh, because of this jammy business here. They're still a little susceptible to rust, but then he'll lose Gorman, maybe if I can roll over. Oh, well, you've got the bile thralls. Well, he's, he's immune to okay. corrosion, right? Oh, yeah, okay, so well, that's a good okay. point. Yeah. So I moved uh, my stalker over here because I wasn't able to get quite the focus uh, that I wanted out of my caster. Probably because of the second uh, Stygian Abyss that you cast? Yeah. Yeah. So I moved him over here and I felt that he was okay. Both of these attack rolls for my uh, for my charging these, machine yeah, race. Yeah, these, these were charging machine race on uh, Epic Eris and my UA for the gun mages. So I needed an 8 on 16 here and I rolled a 7 and then I needed a... You needed a 7. I needed a 7 here and I rolled, rolled a snake 6. Eyes. No, oh, no, well, no, that was, that was 6. The that's, snake that's eyes came over here. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> okay. uh, this machine wraith did run over here to try and jam and create some havoc over there because there's so no these, magic weapon. These two are corporeal. This one is incorporeal. That's correct. Yep. And then here I used my feet to try and prevent some charges and to protect my army as now my bile thr thralls are getting fairly close to the fight. And I wanted to back them up with slayers in case he did run forward. Uh, I protected here a little bit. I needed the body here to protect against Anastasia coming in from this flank. Uh, because if she comes over here, she probably won't be able to get quite close enough to my caster to pull off an espionage. So I felt happy with that. Uh, I had to keep an arc node over here for Ghost Walk on the Infernal Machine so that it could get up where it was. And then just a general advance here because I feel pretty safe with, with what's happening here. Uh, and then that was my turn. Okay, so uh, this is going to be bottom of turn two, my second turn. Uh, it, job number one for me is i got to get out of kill box. That's, that's the first thing. Second thing is, um, okay, so really my army is very susceptible to bile thralls. So I have to kill, I gotta kill as many as possible. Given that the feat is in effect, I'm, my line of sight is only restricted to five inches, right? Uh, I actually can't get very many. So my options are kill a few and then get hammered, uh, or uh, hold back like play back as far as possible and really he's keeping me off the flags that way it's it's playing it safe but uh, but I certainly would lose uh, you know eventually to scenario I think I have a feeling I'm going to be collecting corpses with Alexia pretty soon 
<laughs> okay, so uh, we're gonna go to we're gonna go to uh, my turn two. My suspicion is is that I'm going to feat this turn. This is gonna give me plus three armor, which I'm gonna will uh, help you survive against. Yeah, the it's, well, I won't survive with much, but at least a few pieces are gonna make it through. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, uh, this was the bottom of turn two and highlights uh, my unfamiliarity with the army, but that's why you play, you play to learn. Um, first off, I jammed myself up in the middle uh, pretty hard and uh, in an attempt to uh, clear a path, I had started with the halberdiers and halberdiers actually got blocked in. Um, so a number of them got left out of formation because my leader happened to be up here. And uh, even with Stannis Brocker, Minus two on each individual morale check. Actually uh, needed sevens to pass, but failed with uh, five of them. Um, I threw up a couple here just to form a hedgehog to try and keep bile thralls back and uh, hopefully get them on the next turn. Uh, Rossinante uh, moved up and he feeded in order to get uh, some armor up because I'm, uh, I'm pretty susceptible uh, right now. I'll just show uh, a feet marker on here. And uh, Rocinante uh, was able to get a shot off. Uh, Rocinante was out of feet, so he actually did a fair bit of damage to the Arc Node. Um, I think wiped out a couple of columns. Killed the Arc Node. Uh, killed get the Arc Node, but left movement. Yeah, left movement there. Um, we managed to knock out uh, one of the machine wraiths here with a hammer dwarf. Uh, we didn't get the other one. Uh, the, I had uh, put Deadeye up on the gun mages and then forgot to roll their extra die with most of their attacks. So I was attempting to Thunderbolt back the, this is a Stalker, right? I was attempting to Thunderbolt back the Stalker, kept missing it by one or two on the attacks, and of course if I did the extra die, it probably wouldn't have been so bad. Uh, anyway, once I did remember Deadeye, I was on my last attack and did knock down, got a crit knockdown on, uh, on uh, the Slayer, Slayer uh, which is uh, back there. He's knocked down in the water. That does put his boiler out. Okay. Uh, all right. So uh, over on this side, um, uh, he, uh, Garnet had put a machine wraith in here to kind of uh, gum up uh, my uh, cavalry, and actually he did succeed in uh, free striking away one of my cavalry pieces. Uh, and in my attempt to backswing him into oblivion, I missed on six attacks, and he so defeat. Yeah, because the feet was uh, putting me at minus two mat, so I uh, kept missing on that. Uh, so Alexi is in a position where I hope I can collect a couple of souls. Feet is up, so I'm hoping to um, I'm hoping to uh, survive uh, the counter charge. I wonder if I forgot some of the feet aspects here. Very good. Oh, strength and armor. Okay, uh, fair enough. Uh, we're going to go to the top of, th I'm out of kill box, uh, Garnet's out of kill box. We're going to go to the top of three. Uh, nobody has scored anything yet. Uh, Garnet, what's your plan for this turn? So my turn uh, is going to compose uh, me getting some value from my unit. Yeah, uh, no kidding. <laughs> th this, this little jam here, I'm going to see about uh, perhaps trying to, to kill a little bit with, with the Iron Ledge Overseer walking up and hoping to hellfire this guy so I can close a little bit. Uh, I'd like to bring one over here. Because my uh, machine wraith is now incorporeal again, I can spew and have it survive, mm -hmm. and then maybe leave him there to, to just keep these over here. Uh, these slayers will clean up over on this side, protecting my caster. Anastasia uh, must die, so that's probably going to happen from here, or I'm going to aim the arc node around and do a boosted shadowbind into this. It's just a matter of whether or not I can hit a, a boosted seven which I'm a little you, concerned about. Well, I mean, you're, you haven't been rolling great on the two hits. <laughs> so we'll, we'll, uh, here I have to move up and 
turn the boiler back on. Yeah, that's an action. Uh, that's, that'll be his action. And then here, uh, this bile thrall is going to come over here behind the flag so that I make sure I'm out of here. I'm probably going to lose this arc node this turn, so I'm gonna, I need to get a little value out of it, maybe kill one or two of these guys. But he's going to walk up here, hopefully kill all the gun mages, and leave my machine wraith here so that I can begin to advance with it and really, really get into his back line. Uh, if I kill these mages, gun mages, I'm going to walk uh, the, the machine wraith over and then maybe take a shot at Gorman to try and clean that up. Sure. So, uh, that said, I think that's everybody. And my witches I'm going to try and keep pretty centrally because I do feel that they're fairly safe behind this wall. Because of the obstructions. Because uh, of the giving obstructions cover, Giving cover. Uh, they, they do have stealth when they're in base-to-base -base with the ball, so I, I'm not too, too worried about losing them except for here and here. But I have slayers here to deal with this right now. And then hopefully I don't forget to activate these, and then that would just be really bad for me. <laughs> I'll remind so, you. <laughs> uh, feet comes off, and then here's my turn. Okay, here we go. During my turn, I was able to clean up these steel heads that were here with some good rolls from my slayers. And then I walked up with, uh, with this Iron Lich Overseer and took out another one with a, with a boosted Dark Fire to regain the soul. Uh, at which point, uh, my, my Scarlock here tried to kill Anastasia but rolled one short on damage. Yeah. Did get the boosted to hit, so I had to move my Arc Node out and then do a boosted Shadow Bind and then do Ghost Walk on my Bile Thralls. They did a lot of work this turn. Uh, mm -hmm. One moved over here to pop and kill the, the Jammers over here. And then uh, also, I think you finished off a cavalry piece here. Or was well, I, that I put a couple damage on right, it. Right, right, right. And, yep. and then I arced another yep. Stygian Abyss through it over here. Yeah. Uh, two Bile Thralls walked over here. Uh, one was fortunate enough to get four Gun Mages yep. uh, and a couple of these, these Halberdiers over here. And then I did another one and killed my own Arc Node. It was, it was a poor play. I uh, stood up my, my Jack, so I'll have to get some focus on it somehow next turn and uh, moved my... It wasn't a standing up, you were restarting the boiler. Sorry, I restarted the boiler. Yep. Next turn I'll have to stand it up. So it's, yep. it's been tremendously inefficient for me this game. I left this guy over here because there are no magic weapons on this side of the table that are readily accessible to deal with this machine wraith. So he has tied up these two gun mages exceptionally well. I charged uh, a, a slayer over here to kill the last remaining one that was loose, but he failed to roll eights, uh, so I had to move the stalker over to do it. Uh, and... Uh, that was my turn. I feel pretty safe where I am. I, I was going to move one over to try and score, uh, but he then I would have no stealth on this war witch, and then I would be susceptible to his uh, to his counterattack. This isn't is this is here to indicate that this uh, machine wraith is stealthed or sorry no it's that is corporeal it's sorry. corporeal. Uh, I think the only thing that I have to add is that because I was under feet, it, it actually uh, saved these dwarves. But the problem is they were, they're all corroded. So the likelihood that I lose them anyway is, is, is pretty high. high, pretty high. Okay. Okay, uh, so we're going to go to my turn three. And uh, let's think, what the hell am I going to do? I do have magic pistols, but I have to disengage. Uh, and the, the free strikes are going to be ugly yet. I've really lost all of my hitting power over here. These, the, this has been a, a kind of a terrible debacle happening on my left flank. I'm going to rally my pikemen. Uh, quite honestly, I think I think it's Alexia that's going to have to start getting some work done uh, over on this side, and we'll see how many hammer dwarfs uh, wind up here. I may go ahead and attempt to score a point uh, with uh, Damiano because I can do that. Um, we'll get some focus onto Rossinante, and uh, he'll start uh, probably taking some shots. So, uh, okay, we'll go to bottom of uh, turn three and. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, we'll see what happens. It's not looking good, but uh, we'll I, see. I got a little fortune on some rolls too. That's all right. Okay, so we'll see what happens here.
uh, that was the bottom of turn three. And uh, so I, what I did is I tried to set up for an assassination run. It wouldn't really be an assassination run. I just want to do a bunch of damage if I can. So what I had done is I'd taken Alexia up. I had uh, put some, cor uh, some corpses. I'd reanimated them up here. Uh, after the move, I had turned one of them into a solo, which I charged towards Aragorn. Looking at, and again, I'm unfamiliar with this unit. Looking at the symbol, I thought I had reach. What I actually have is Weapon Master. So I actually failed the charge, which kind of sucked. Should have gone on the witch. Yeah, if I'd gone on the witch, it would have been sweet. <laughs> anyway, uh, what uh, Gorman had done up here is he'd thrown some black oil on, uh, on this Slayer. It hit the Slayer and the Stalker. So both are black oiled, which is pretty good. Um, I had disengaged from the Machine Wraith here which whiffed on the attack on uh, one, of the, uh, uh, one of the gun mages, uh, which is great. Uh, he came out and he shot down the um, Warwitch Siren, which was back here. The captain uh, was actually able in melee uh, to kill the, uh, the, the machine wraith that was over here. It's because he was painted. <laughs> it's because he was painted. Uh, the hammer dwarves uh, just uh, moved up and uh, moved one up to engage the two black oiled uh, jacks. Um, Unbelievably, or perhaps very believably, my uh, pikemen uh, remain fleeing. They did not rally this turn. I was able to disengage Stannis. Uh, and that's it, and we're going to go to top of turn four. What are you going to do this turn? So this turn, uh, I see you here behind the incorporeal flag. Oh, I'm sorry. I, yeah, I brought Damiano up to dominate the flag, so I have one control point. So your current uh, armor is 16? Uh, plus 17? one, plus one for 17. Okay. So what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to use my Battle Thralls to clear out this mess here. I'd like to try and get one on Alexia, Alexia. Uh, which might free up my, my War Witch to come up and do a spray and clear out some of this. This uh, uh, Machine Wraith is freed up, so it may run here to engage her, just to prevent her from coming any further forward to avoid this from happening again. Uh, I'm going to try and move my Arc Node up here. I can target Damiano through the incorporeal flag, so I, I do believe I'm going to try and assassinate him this turn. Yeah. Uh, I think his defense is 19 right 19 now. 19 right now, yeah. So I, I need to roll 10s uh, for my spells. Uh, I'd, like to, I'd like to hit him with Shadowbinder or two, and then once that's happened, then I would like to uh, try and put a arbor, an armor debuff on him before I, I activate my Vile Thrall. Yeah, yeah. So that's, uh, and then I have this as well. I'd really like to shadow bind him and get him down to 16. Uh, it'll make a lot of my other attacks kind of really worth it. Uh, you're going to need to apply focus and maybe stand up. Well, I'll just, or? I'll forfeit his uh, his action and yeah. just move him. Sure, okay. Uh, so, so that looks, that's kind of, like I'm winning here. But I don't have any really, really available tools here to deal with her. Yeah, and I think, like, I've kind of stabilized this area, but it may not be enough. Damiano is exposed and, and available for assassination right now. All right, uh, we're going to go to top of turn four. Off you go. Well, first things first, war witches are going to go. They're going to try and put a boosted shadow bind through here, targeting Damiano. So it's range 10. So I'm pretty sure I got range, so I need a 10. So I get it, and I get the I get the shadow bind as well. Yeah, with the crit shadow bind. 12 on, 9, 12 on 17? 17. Minus 5. So I'm in a boost damage. Okay, minus 5. Uh, so 3 points. 1, 2, 3, got it. Now I'm going to try and put a Curse of Shadows onto him, and I'm going to boost that. So now I need a 7. Okay. So that's good. Right. So I have Curse of Shadows on your Warcaster. That's a uh, armor debuff. It's minus two. Okay. And then I am going to put one more stitch into this on him. I need a seven. So I hit, and then this is uh, twelve on four. Uh, it's fifteen. No, yeah, fifteen. So three off. So one point. One point. Oh, I'm lousy. Okay. Okay, uh, this homeboy's gonna move up. Dark fire, magic ability seven. Seven on 19. Uh, 16. 16. Okay, uh, because of shadow bond. Yeah. yeah. I hit, this is a power 12. See, all your rolls are coming in now. Uh, not my damage <laughs> rolls. So three off. Yeah. Uh, there's a six. Okay, six. Gonna come up here, uh, just gonna come to the edge. 
So I, I totally have five yeah. while, while remaining unengaged. Sure. Uh, and then this one's going to come up three. One, four, five. And then this one's going to come up three. Four, five. Uh, and then this guy, he's going to. Do you want to see if he's engaged? Yeah, I don't think he is. No, he's not. This guy's going to come over here. Oh, there goes my unit here. Uh, and then he's just going to hang out. Over here. So, first pop. Uh, oh, shit. Oh, shit. Yeah, that's good. Oh, no. <laughs> no. Okay, so, first one here will hit Damiano. Mm -hmm. And these two, and this Risen. Yeah. And my War Witch. I'm going to roll my War Witch first. Minus one. Five. Shoot. That was a poor play. Okay, yeah. so uh, on Damiano, minus three. Uh, six points. Six. Oh, uh, that's it. Exactly. All right. Good job. So the first one here was uh, was the defense. Yeah. So I still had one here, and then I'm, I might have been able to get this one on. Yeah. Yeah, but not the next. I one. don't think the next one no. would have been on. So I would have only had one more purge, yeah. and then I would have cleared these a little bit, uh, not killed this one. Yeah. So this one could have maybe moved over and then turned into something. I might yeah, I, I, honestly, castle. I don't think I have much of a play. I just lost too much of my cavalry over here to bad play. So I think we saw a good display of what uh, Machine Minds is capable of. Essentially, a lot of pressure with the Jacks. I thought I dealt with them okay over on this side. Yes, your three ambushing uh, machine rates were a pain in the butt. More of a pain in the butt than I thought, particularly when you got that first, strike, first uh, free strike off against a cavalry unit and killed it. Which was really quite nasty. Boosted POW eights, man. They're they're a real thing. Yeah. Okay. So uh, okay. Thanks very much. That's the game, and I uh, want to thank uh, Garnet for uh, for coming out. Uh, appreciate it, and uh, that was fun. Okay.